Everybody, welcome to Brick Vault. In front of us is one of the biggest Lego models we've ever managed to put together in the studio ever. Built with over 17,000 parts, this is one of the ultimate tributes to the Clone Wars era. From the designer Jesper Lindbergh, aka Stahl, this is the Lucra Hulk class droid control ship. These were originally built as massive cargo freighters for the Trade Federation, but with a few modifications, they ended up being the perfect platform for moving and deploying the Separatist droid army all over the galaxy. I've always loved the shape of this ship, and the details on the custom behemoth that we see before us had me discovering all kinds of new things I hadn't noticed or even on the original. There is so much I want to show you on this model, but first let me just say that if you ever feel like undertaking this project for yourself, you can get the instructions at our web store, brickvault.toys. Included with each purchase is the PDF step-by-step -step building guide. It's got a digital parts list for quickly uploading and ordering all the pieces you'll need. Every model listed is built in real life and then tested for strength. The instructions are also tested so they're easy to follow along. And if you want to print stickers for extra detailing, we've also included a pre-sized PNG as well. It is so awesome being able to get to work with some of the best builders from all over the world, and Jesper really has created something special here. Let's jump straight back to the Lucre Hulk. It's hard to pinpoint some of the finer details on the build without first acknowledging its immense presence as a physical model. Even at the scale of over one to 3,000, the model is almost perfectly even in length and width at 90 centimeters each, and it's 32 centimeters off the ground. So Imperial Measurements puts that at almost exactly three feet by three feet by one foot. It is huge. But more than it just being a big model, the designer was able to hone in on some subtle curving shapes that can't be pulled off the same way at a smaller size. The sphere center is even all the way around, but it's also created in a way that allows for easy built-in color integration and extending control towers. The flat base for the superstructure shows some satisfying layers as it leads down to the three huge main engines, and the rounded shape for sure has some great shapes. It isn't actually circular, but instead has a cross section similar to something like a bullet or an arrowhead. The long slow curve on the top and bottom sections bump into a short inverted edge that softens the transition to the vertical inner wall full of window detailing and greebles. On the larger scale here, this shaping comes off really well. It feels very smooth and elegant and so much more dynamic than the commonly referred to donut shape that gets thrown around so often for the Lucre Hulk. There are round curves on top of curves when it comes to the ends of the rings, the slopes and rounded corners overextend the edge of the ring break a little and they just integrate into the structure without any open seams. I think this area just looks phenomenal. Okay, I'm now getting sucked into the closer details of the ship. So let's dive right into easily one of the most extra, extra dedications to accuracy that I've found on a model before. The curved hanger has floor, wall, and ceiling details that extends back extremely deep into the model. It's great that there's so much detail dedicated to a part of the build that only can really be seen unless you get very up close and personal with the build. I often say the closer you get, the more detail you see. Well, this is a prime example of something like that. Jesper also added row after row of turrets all along the top 
and bottom of the ship. Same goes for the dishes that communicate with the droids. The outer edge has almost endless creative greebles that line the entire exterior. The superstructure is extremely busy with towers and different types of sensors. The docking claw, in fact, has some very interesting shapes as well. And I mean, they're are so many subtle connections and top rate elements that I can't begin to cover them all. I'll try to get as many flashing beauty shots pop through the screen right now just to give you an idea of what some of my personal favorite little elements are on this build, but this model simply has a lot to offer visually. Now, in terms of interactive features, there technically is one, and that is the model transforms a little bit when you need to move it around your house. This is what the model looked like right after bringing it into the Lightroom from the Build Studio. The main function, really, of this transformation is to use the Technic build handles that attach to the inner frame. They're really, really strong and also built to be able to pivot a little so wobbles don't add stress as you move it. One person can move this around on their own, technically, but this thing is wider than most doorways, so you'll need two people if you want to be able to angle it properly when moving between rooms. With two people, each have a hand on a handle, then one supports the head from the bottom dish while the other grabs deep into the Technic frame under the superstructure. That's more than enough support to get this thing from A to B, and the transformation for these handles is actually pretty darn smooth. Two Technic axles are pulled out of either side, which allows you to take the lift arm main handle frame off of the sides, then the detailing can be added on to the model again. And then after this, the handles themselves fold up and then twist inward to rest inside the main center frame. Technic axles also have a little resting spot so you don't lose any of the extra pieces and the whole superstructure is reattached. It's actually a pretty straightforward process. So I know that's not technically a play feature, but you know, the model does somewhat transform and it certainly makes your life a whole lot easier when moving around this huge, huge build. It certainly is starting to flesh out larger sections of the Clone Wars universe that we've had fun building in the studio. And Jesper, AKA Stahl, has brought something truly awesome to the custom building community. Anyways, guys, if you did wanna build this creation for yourself, remember the instructions can be found in the link in the description below at brickvault.toys. Let me know what types of models you wanna see built in the future. If you enjoy our content, feel free to like, subscribe, comment, share, do whatever it is that you wanna do. And we'll see you next time at Brick Vault. Yeah!